Here's another Spell Table CDH game, and this time it doesn't even feature Malira. I'm playing Umori the Collector, and I'm up against Ishai and Jessica, Marwin the Nurturer, and Skithrix the Blight Dragon. As always, I'm not running cards that have only been printed in Commander Precon, Commander Legends, Universes Beyond, reprints of said cards and promos, Masters, and Set Boosters, cards that mention the Command Zone, and Uncards. I play a Forest, then cast a Chromatic Star, passing afterwards. Player 2 plays an Ancient Tomb, then takes 2 for an Izzet Signet. Player 3 plays a Forest, then casts a Soul Ring. Player 4 plays an Ink Moth Nexus, then passes turn. I play a Tree of Tales, then activate the Chromatic Star to sacrifice it and make a black mana, drawing a card. I didn't draw anything worthwhile, so I let it fizzle and pass turn. Player 2 plays a Scalding Tarn, cracking it immediately to search up a Tundra. He then casts one of his commanders, Ishai Ojutai Dragonspeaker, then passes turn. Player 3 plays a Forest, then casts his commander, Marwin the Nurturer. He follows it up with the Lanamore Elves. Player 2 puts two counters on Ishai, while Player 3 puts a counter on Marwin. Player 4 plays a Karn's Bastion, then casts a Charcoal Diamond, triggering Ishai to get another counter before passing turn. I play a Blooming Marsh as my land for turn, then cast a Scrapyard Recombiner, giving Ishai another counter and passing turn. Player 2 plays Command Tower, then casts a Jeweled Lotus, sacrificing it for 3 red to cast his other commander, Jeska, Thrice Reborn. She ticks down to deal 2 damage to Marwyn, Lanamore Elves, and Scrapyard Recombiner, then follows it up with a Mr. Grimora before passing turn. Player 3 plays a Homeward Path, then recasts Marwyn, putting another counter on Ishai. Player 4 plays a Cabal Stronghold, then casts a Heraldic Banner, choosing Blacking, letting Ishai get another counter stronger. He casts a Black Blade Reforge, giving Ishai another counter, then passes turn. I play a Forest, then cast my General, Umori the Collector. Ishai gets another counter, and as Umori enters, I choose Artifacts to make them cheaper and pass turn. Player 2 doesn't pay for Mystic Remora, but it'll take a few seconds to put that in the graveyard. He casts a Talisman of Progress, then casts a Dragon Rage Channeler. Moving to combat, he sends Ishai at player 4 for 9 commander damage, then passes. Player 3 casts Kogla the Titan Ape, giving Ishai another counter, and it fights the Dragon Raids Channeler when it enters the battlefield. With nothing else, he passes turn. Player 4 starts off with a Damnation, but player 2 casts Swangsung to counter it, giving him a bird. He casts a Shadow Sphere, then passes. I start off with a discounted Mystic Forge, and it resolves. I take a look and activate it right away, losing a life and exiling a swamp off the top of my library. I play Wooded Foothills as my land for turn, then sacrifice it to find an overgrown tomb untapped. While I shuffle, player 2 remembers his Ishai triggers, putting 3 counters on it. When the shuffle resolves, I check the top again, and then pay 1 for Helm of Awakening, giving Ishai another counter. I cast a Talisman of Resilience for free, giving Ishai another counter, and then I pay 1 for a Cloud Key, choosing artifacts, and Ishai gets yet another counter. I cast Chromatic Sphere off the top, growing Ishai, and then cast a Mirror Retriever, giving Ishai another counter. I crack my Chromatic Sphere to make a black and draw a card, and then cast an Implement of Veracity, adding another counter to Ishai. I cast Sleeper Dart off the top for free, adding a counter to Ishai, and I draw a card. I free cast a Grim Monolith from the top of my library, Ishai, counter, etc., and then sacrifice the Sleeper Dart targeting Ishai so it doesn't untap next turn. I go to combat, sending Omori at player 2 and then I pass turn. Player 2 plays a Steam Vents untapped, then casts a Wheel of Fortune. He casts Dramatic Reversal, untapping his non-land permanence, then moves to combat, sending a shy at me and taking me out of the game. With nothing else, he passes turn. Player 3 plays a Turn Timber Serpentine Wood as his land for turn, taking 3 for it to enter untapped. He taps out for an Entwined Tooth and Nail, searching a Pyrax Tower Scout and Quirion Ranger to his hand, but he changes his mind and asks the table for a do-over, replacing the Scout with Scrib Ranger. The other half of Tooth and Nail resolves, having Scrib Ranger and Ashaya Soul of the Wild enter the battlefield. He moves to combat, sending Coglet Player 2, destroying the Talisman of Progress and taking 7. He does nothing else in his second main and passes turn. Player 4 casts his commander, Skithrix the Blight Dragon, then moves to combat, giving it haste and attacking Player 2 for 5 Infect. Player 2 recasts Jeska, then goes negative 2 to deal 2 damage to Scrib Ranger, Marwin, and Player 4's life total. Player 3 activates Scrib Ranger's ability to bounce itself thanks to Ashaya, and Player 2 casts a Gitaxian Probe, targeting Player 3. I'm not choosing to name everything in his hand because viewing it causes player 2 to claim, oh you have to die now. He goes to combat sending a shy at player 3, killing him and passing turn afterwards. Player 4 casts a Rogue's Passage as his land return, then equips Skithrix with a Shadow Spear. He activates Rogue's Passage to give Skithrix unblockable and swings at player 2 for lethal infect, winning the game.